So there's uh, some interesting experimentation currently going on in regards to the legalization of marijuana at the state level. So this is from The Intercept. Natasha Leonard says, Rhode Island Coalition pushes most equitable legal cannabis regulations yet ahead of inevitable national legalization. Rhode Island activists urge the state to right the wrongs of the war on drugs. So um, I believe the name of the group is Yes We Cannabis. Yes We Cannabis. Get it? Uh, play on words. Um, and listen to how ambitious this is. Apparently what they want is 50% of the weed business licenses to go to worker-owned co-ops. Okay, I see you. I see you. So they're trying to make it. And here's the, the key point. People are afraid, and rightly so, of big weed basically coming in, getting a stranglehold, um, and having, like, effective monopolies. It's like, I forget which which uh, state it was. Was it Ohio? Was it Michigan? I forget which state it was, but there was some state where they had legalization of marijuana on the ballot, but basically the rules were a scam. It was like, only, like, these two or three companies can make weed, and they have ties to, like, whoever the fucking governor was at the time, and, you know, it was a monopoly, and people were chose to, uh, were forced to choose between having some semblance of increased freedom or complete, you know, corruption, market manipulation, and um, all the riches and the spoils going to this tiny group of people at the top. And I think it just barely failed. We'd failed. That was one of the few times we'd failed. So I guess people saw through the economic angle to it. But now what we're talking about is really using legalized marijuana as um, an experimentation with real progressive ideas. So another thing is, like in New York, for example, I think as soon as weed is fully legalized, you're, they're expunging all former weed crimes. All, it might even be all former nonviolent drug offenses. I'm not sure. It's definitely at least marijuana stuff. Um, and so, yes, this is where we are now. The states are actually experimenting with um, interesting new ideas and the other thing is to try to redress the grievances of, you know, this country's terrible history with race relations. You know, um, there was slavery and then Jim Crow and segregation. And now there's a colossal wealth gap that largely is explained by the access to resources being so much less in minority communities. So a lot of um, states are having these rules where like, the first people in line to get the licenses for the legal marijuana businesses are in communities of color. Um, and there's, you know, certain percentages like this, this percentage of the weed licenses need to be there. Well, now we got the most ambitious thing yet, which is 50% of weed businesses um, need to be worker-owned co-ops for Rhode Island. This hasn't passed yet, but they're working on it. And by the way, interesting fact I learned in this article is that it's the majority of worker-owned co-ops are actually minority-owned. And, and female-owned, which is interesting, isn't it? Um, so, anyway, credit to Rhode Island. I hope this gets through. And this is the kind of... Um, this is the kind of reform that I could definitely get behind, which is slow but steady experimentation with more and more lefty ideas to see which ones work and which ones don't. And, yeah, any sort of incentivizing of worker-owned co-ops to bring more democracy to the workplace... I think will have very positive effects. So credit to Rhode Island, credit to this group. I hope this ends up being the law and I will anxiously watch what ends up happening.